What's up, guys, and welcome to another um, Inside Snoop, as we're going to call it. Um, so basically, we're back with Justin again, and we're going to talk everything supplements, UK, UK US. This episode is going to be more focused on um, especially stuff that Justin's tried from the UK and things potentially, obviously, that we use from the US and sell. Um, so we're going to crack on with you just crack on with what you were saying about, about some brands you've tried from the UK. Yeah, we'll try. I know last week we had uh, the goal was to cover a lot of topics, but we didn't. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't really hit. Do we, that. Just started, <laughs> we just started. So, so this week we'll try to hit on like a couple of things that we really meant to talk about. Yeah. Um, because you were asking me, you know, we started talking about the differences between, um, you know, the U.S. and U.K. And it's tough because, you know, there's some brands in the U.S. that, you know, when you see these crazy, awesome formulas and stuff like that your distribution gets tough. Like yeah. we know that, you know, there's a, there's a, a fine balance between, <clears throat> you know, how much can we cram into this formula, but then also be able to get it into people's hands. Yeah. So sometimes I see these, some UK formulas and I'm like, damn, but we know we can't get it here. Like yeah. There's yeah. unless, unless they're nice enough to send me some. Um, so sometimes we'll see some, um, formulas. There was some that I saw recently that, um, impressed me was it brain gains yeah they do yeah. some really cool stuff yeah. um i know they're one that stem free nootropic i got to try that that one i was like man this is a <laughs> that's a stinking loaded formula like, yeah that's yeah, a yeah. big one did you um, actually get to try the formula yes yeah what, what so did I you did, think it was good i you know it's stem free nootropics are tough yeah they are um because it's like well wh- how do you you know it what are you really going to feel like if yeah. you have, and I, I never want to, we talked about this a little bit last time, but I, I never want to discourage someone from using 37 ingredients in a product, but yeah. what, what all is really, are you noticing is going to be doing it? Which is what's cool about some nootropics is some ingredients are in there for long term, yeah. you know, sort of brain health. And some of them are in there for like right now. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Um, but you know, you could use a product with, like some theanine and, you know, something like that. And it might feel exactly the same yeah. as something, you know, when you're using this massive formula. So it's kind of tough. Yeah, you know, that's, we, that's what we found with um, with brain gains. Um, ah, there's another one. There's another one which is pretty packed out. <clears throat> and for me, I feel better off just taking one capsule of dynamine, for example. Like, yeah, yeah it's a weird one. Yeah, I couldn't, you know, and like I said, I, I would never want to criticize someone from for just putting just as much in there as possible. Yeah. But if you were to blindfold me and I were to take that brain gains and I were to take something else that I've tried many, many times, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that I, I, could, I definitely couldn't tell you that there's, you know, uh, that this formula is 20 times as expensive as this as one. That one. Yeah. Um, it was kind of one of those things where, and what we run into a lot here is there's some formulators here that they'll send me stuff to try, but they won't show me the formula, which right, okay. is, is a lot of trust on my end, yeah. you know, but that's probably a better approach. Um, because, you know, when you see a formula, there's, it's just impossible not to have some sort of bias yeah. going into it when you know them as well as we do. And you, you're like, okay, I'm expecting this to um, do this. Yeah you already like a product before you even try it. Um, so it's hard not to get into that sort of thing. So when I saw the brain games formula, I was like, this is badass. Like this is, you know, good, good for these people. Um, I think that's an issue though. Do you think that's a bit, I think sometimes that can now be an issue because we have so many customers now, which will see a formula and they'll come to me and go, Danny, this formula looks insane. I'd be like, yeah, but you've got to understand there's a lot in it. But technically, there's two things which are going to do this and two things which are going to do this. So you're going to get right. nothing. Um, and that's not talking about brain gains, but other formulas in general where I've gone, I don't yeah. think I want to stock that. Like sometimes people are panel. Um, there should be a cool word for it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's, it's, um, it is a fascinating phenomenon that, that I've seen that I'm actually trying. I usually I will push back. Like I said, you don't ever want to be like, hey, put less in your products. But yeah. What I'll say is there's been this shift where, you know, no one was looking at yes. the formulas and now maybe we're, <laughs> I do, I even want to say the words, but sometimes we're like too yes. into looking at the formulas because yes. people are like, well, you know, 
now every product to be somewhat legit. And this is what I like. We're already getting way off topic, but <laughs> this is what I love about <clears throat> what Glaxon is doing in yeah. America right now. Glaxon has basically been like everything you, you think you, you know, yeah. like we're just going to prove that you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they're taking, it's not that they underdose products or anything like that, but they're like, they're like this whole bullshit where, well, it has to have this and it has to have this or it has to have this. They're like, how about we just, we'll show you how to really formulate a product, yeah. get ingredients that can work together, and then we'll blow you away with them. Um, and it sort of blows a hole in a lot of these theories. Exactly. That people are like, okay, you get on the, um, it's why I don't even, I don't even read. I don't read the, what people say about formulas and stuff like that because <clears throat> I'll see it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, Clearly, this person has never used a product in their life. Yeah. Because it's like, well, I just read it and I make a lot of comments about Because we talked about this last time, too. There's there's so many studies in that on one ingredient. Yeah. But it's, there's there's not studies on this plus this plus this. Exactly, plus yeah. This yeah. Plus. And then how many things are you going to – how many things do you feel at one time? Exactly. I don't know about you, but I'm like two max. So. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I agree 100%. And I think it's it's interesting to see and – like like you've said, you summed it up so well that there's been this huge shift, which which kind of people like us have actually tried to bring on, but then we're sat there now going, right. no, hold back a little bit, like try it first, like right. okay, like look at it, go looks good, I'll try it, but I want to feel something, like um, yeah, it's a weird situation, but so I guess back to what we were saying, <laughs> um, what have so what have you tried recently from the UK? So um, one brand that we were talking about before we started recording was is uh, Supplement Needs, mm-hmm. um, and Supplement Needs is is one of these ones that I'm talking about where they use. <clears throat> granted, I think it was their um, their CB stack. I think mm-hmm. I have now. That's I mean that's loaded. But then you know when you start talking about general health formulas, that's good because you, you know the more ingredients, it's doing things that you're not really necessarily noticing. Yeah. It's just things that you're investing in, but. Some of their formulas are, they're a little bit smaller and then like max dosages. Yeah. Um, I use the PM priming stack. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Yeah, yeah. Which is a cool one. Um, I love, some of the smartest formulators I know have have been secretly, because people aren't really ready for it, <laughs> Yeah. pushing back against choline sources in pre-workouts and putting them before bed Yeah. kind of thing. Um, and so... They were one of them. Glaxon was another one that started doing that. Uh, Muscle Spore was another one. But Supplement Needs products I've been really, really impressed with. Um, that PM Priming Stack is a monster um, and expensive. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you've ever formulated, I know you have. It's like if people out there, if you've ever put together a formula, yeah. and you put together, you know, 1,500 milligrams of phosphatidylserine and 1,600 milligrams of alpha GPC. Yeah. That's it, man. You can't afford oh, yeah. anything. Yeah, that's like a retail cost price, you know, right. f- just for the cost. Yeah. Um, and what we found is, though, so for us, Supplement Needs sells very well as a brand. It sells brilliantly. In terms of the health things, the health things go down a treat. Um, so we sell, we sell the CV stack, the um, Astrad's Flow, which is the kidney support. And mm, the, that's a new one? Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's not. No, no, no. They've had that for quite a while, but they changed the name. There's one mm. they've brought out recently called, well, it's not out yet. It's called Immuno Pro, something like that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but there's another one, uh, kid, kidney, no, liver stack, liver stack. So mm-hmm. those three we sell as a, as a health stack, and they come in at like, I think it's a, about £100 bang on. But for those three, that's just brilliant. Like, you can't yeah. get a better price than that. Now, what we have found is with the priming stack, because it's so expensive, obviously the, the price to retail is a lot more. Now, mm-hmm. where we found the difference is we sell um, Support Max Neuro from Strom which is very similar to, to that. They have very similar ingredients. Mm. They work in a very similar way. Now, we found that the pre and primary stack, we can't sell. We've probably sold two, whereas Neuro, we're selling 50 a week. Um, mm-hmm. And that's just because how much are you willing to pay extra to right. get that little bit more? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. That's kind of the name of the game, and that's um, why it's always good. Yeah, you know, because uh, take an ingredient... Well, both ingredients in there. Take phosphatidylserine, take alpha GPC. Yeah. Um, you don't need the max, you know, dose necessarily to get benefits from it. Just yeah. some companies will choose to push that threshold. Like we, you know, we have um, Morphogen here that, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
he he's like, I don't care. I don't care if you can get, you know, benefits from less doses. I'm going max effort, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Or it's like, you know, and other companies will be like, okay, well, we'll do this, which is fine. It's good to have both approaches and good to have both options out there. Yeah. You know, depending on what you want. But I've seen, I've never used anything from Strom, which is surprising to me at this point. But their line is really cool. It's very, um, <clears throat> what I like about Strom and the supplement needs very like there's not a whole lot going on with you know the marketing yeah and this stuff it's very like here we want to provide we want to put most of our money into the formulas yeah um it's always cool you know especially if you want like larger distribution you're gonna have to catch people's attention with your marketing and stuff like that but you know if you're if i'm gonna lean one way or another me personally you know give me more give me more ingredients so yeah, it's exactly, cool yeah. to see it's cool to see both of them um but supplement needs if you haven't used the PM priming stack, that is a super impressive uh, product for sure. Yeah, I think it's um, it's quite interesting because Strom, kind of over here, we have like a group of of retailers slash brands that we're all kind of good friends. You know, we all kind of know each other mm -hmm. quite well. And um, there's there's um, supplement needs Strom. They're both very close to each other in terms of friends as well. Um, and what I like what they both do is they're both in a market at a very similar place. So a lot of those guys that kind of shop with both those brands are big bodybuilders. You know, they're quite, um, they're obviously enhanced guys. Um, and they are, they're after that more kind of health. They're not so bothered about the branding, as you've said. They want mm -hmm. good ingredients. They're willing to pay a lot because it's their career. Um, right. But what I like, what the difference is, is they're in the same sector, but you've got some needs who are a bit more high end. They put a bit more into the formulas, um, but they're different at the same time. So like mm -hmm. Strom's very simplistic, but very, very well done. Um, and the difference is, for example, the products that they have. So they have, like I said to you, the health stack, where it's three products, in, three products um, separate products, which is more for you guys that are literally competing. You know, they're getting a lot of gear in the system. They're going to need a lot of health support. Whereas yeah. what Strom did is they, they started to start this product first. It was a while ago called Support Max, just normal Support Max. Mm -hmm. And that's just an all-in-one on-cycle support. So it's got a bit of everything. So like one from each of those three, um, all-in-one at a cheaper price. Um, mm -hmm. And I think they've both kind of fit into this market, kind of weaving, woven together. So they've they've made such a good thing where they both can, you know, kind of profit from that. Yeah. Um, which is yeah, so there's cool. There's plenty to see. out there. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. there's plenty. Because and that maybe that'll lead to a question that I want to ask you. Um, because don't tell Americans that like, don't tell, <laughs> don't tell Americans that there's enough market out there for everyone Yeah. because, um, and especially I would say retailers over here, man, it, dude, they are so like ruthless to each other. Oh, really? It, it is at the, it is at the, I would say it hurts the industry, um, with how much, uh, it, it right. Competition is good, right? Of course. Competition. Yeah. But but it gets to a point where um, we sort of hurt ourselves. What I see, the way brands compete with each other in the United States and retailers compete with each other, and even at this point, manufacturers, I mean, I see them the same things. It's like we just, we are our own worst enemy over here. So I was kind of curious to hear you say about how there's, like here, there's retailers that maybe tolerate each other. Right. But that's that's at best. Right, okay. It's, is tolerate each other sometimes you'll see them maybe do leverage each other for some sort of networking purposes but okay. not a whole lot of um retailers really like each other that's for sure yeah yeah and brands are the same way brands uh especially and that's what uh, is, is always funny to me because i think you'll see a lot of brands sort of get into this game where they're like especially in, in america they're like oh you know i have a lot of passion i want to get in there i want to make something really cool and you get into this industry where these guys that are entrenched in this industry, the large ones, want you to fucking die. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't want you anyway. Like, it's not like, oh, yeah, you're doing some cool stuff. Come on in. <laughs> no, like, this is life and death with them. And so that's why, like, these guys come in and they just get steamrolled. Yeah. Because they're yeah. like, wow, nobody wants me, you know, in this space. That's the kind of how we are over here. Yeah, we, we've had that um, with American brands to us, like, even to us. So, like... I had a phone call once off one of our brands and he said to me, Well, why are we your not top why are we not your top selling products? 
I said, well, I don't know. People, you know, you're, you're like our second best selling product. You're doing well. And he's like, no, 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 that's not good enough. I'm like, right, okay. So he goes, well, how can we beat that other brand? And I'm like, dude, like, seriously, like, what's wrong with you? Like, chill out. <laughs> um, and he's literally like, we have to be the number one. And I'm like, yeah, but if, yeah. if people over here aren't getting it as much as the other brand, it's never going to be. Like, I understand what you're trying to do, but... <laughs> Calm down, like yeah. Oh no, no, we don't do that. You know, yeah. Actually, I won't. I won't name the brands, but I would say one of the first um, experiences I had with that. One of the first like big events we went to that I was at, where I was like a presence within the industry. Um, I talked to several, and these are people that have been. They're very, very big names in this industry, and <clears throat> how they interact with each other. You know, but then as soon as people would walk away, the things that they would say to me about like the other ones i'm just like oh my gosh like you guys are crazy (laughs) but you know i kind of get it too there's um it's just what we do so how how was it at the um the is it the block party how how was it (laughs) there funny you say that Uh, (laughs) because at the block party um that's natural body inks yearly um natural body ink is definitely i would say one of the more successful brick and mortar retailers like over here um, we talked about that last week, but yeah. their block party is massive and it's in New York city. It is a very small, I mean, it's a big, um, store, but yeah. you know, New York city, everything's right on top of each other. So it, it goes, it streams around the block. You know, people are just in one big line and just, it's, it's chaos. Right. right? <laughs> and you get all these people in a very close space and it's just funny. It was always funny to me because you know, the, the big thing that I pride myself on is I never, I have zero ties to any brand, any retailer, any manufacturer. We do our own thing totally separately. I'm like the only one that can just go into a setting like this and just, and just observe. Yeah. Yeah. And this, and it's just funny to watch people, they tolerate each other. But then as soon as, <laughs> as soon as they're alone, or as soon as the person walks away, it's just like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, like you guys are so hilarious. Like they, they all hate each other. I mean, they really do. Like they, they might act like, oh, yeah, I respect him. No, they don't. They're yeah, wrong. you really do. <laughs> they don't. That's just not what we do. That's not what we do, man. It's just un-American to root for someone else to to succeed and <laughs> instead of you. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's quite strange because I think somehow over here, which to fair, British people aren't normally known of being very nice, but for some reason, a few of us in this kind of sector have kind of somehow grown to like each other doing well which is pretty strange but i guess it's a good thing it's not a bad thing is it let's be honest so yeah i think what well, one thing that we've seen and um one thing that i know we've been able to help is there's some uh because like i said i don't have any financial ties or any interest in what brands are doing i just talk about products and through that there's been a lot of say sm- smaller to mid-sized brands that i think have gained a lot of traction because they didn't have the money to sort of market. Like yeah. you, you'll see, like there's a lot of, and even, and this is why I don't get out and go on other people's platform because um, everybody that's in, say, a similar position to me, secretly hate each other as well. Like, yeah. Me, I'm sure I can't even imagine the things that people say. I don't, I don't want to know. I don't care. But it's basically because like I can say things about brands that no one else can because mm. they're somehow tied to these brands. Um, so there's always going to be some sort of pressure to anytime a brand is paying you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really hard to give an honest opinion Yeah, and we're going to cover that tonight. Um, everyone out there, they're honest and no, no BS reviewers. That's a, that's a total lie. It's total bullshit. Everybody's biased towards someone like, yeah. you know, we meet, we meet people in this industry that are good people. It's hard not to be biased towards people that you yeah. know you know what they're doing so that whole unbiased thing like if you're i would just say if you're a reviewer out there a reviewer and you're like oh i'm no bs unbiased well it's because you haven't met anyone because it's impossible <laughs> and no one knows who you are because it's impossible not to be somewhat biased yeah somewhat biased yeah even when it comes to like what we were talking about earlier you see a formula you're automatically going to be somewhat biased yeah good or bad yeah you know, just because that's just human nature so it's just always funny to see. That's why we stick to what we do. And yeah, no, <laughs> like, I think you're in a better position by doing that, I think. And I think it's, um, 
what's quite funny is that you said you know you can be biased about a formula I think even myself can sometimes be a little bit kind of shallow because I can sometimes see a branding right. and like a branding and be like right I hope this formula is good so I will yeah. look for the good things in the formula and be like right yeah it's good then I look back at it and go yeah it's not really is it um right for sure yeah because so, you find yeah. yourself saying things like you're like would I say that about that product if yeah. it was a different brand like if I just wiped everything away it's impossible yeah exactly it is um so I think one thing I kind of want to ask you is, because I don't think it really happens, is there any UK brands at all in America? No. I mean, you know, there's there's brands that I think do well there. I think like, you know, maybe like a Nova Farm, I think is really huge in the UK. I think, right? They do part yeah. of it. It's not a UK brand. It's like even um, ones that we really wanted to see here, um, it's just really hard to make that happen because, yeah. and this is going to always going to be the struggle because in America we have extremely high standards at this point for what we want to see in a formula. How is a UK brand going to set up distribution in America and, and break into that market? It's hard yeah. enough to be an American brand and break into the American market, let alone if you're a UK brand uh, because if you're going to break into America with enough marketing and things behind it, your formula is not going to be, yeah, you know, and we have enough of those over here. So I honestly just yeah. don't see, I don't see how a UK brand, even something like, um, like what court was doing, like a biohack, like how, how the hell is he going to, I mean, amazing formulas. Americans were really excited about that, but you can't, they try to make it happen with natural body ink, but it's, it's like impossible yeah. because how are you going to set up, you know, a massive distribution for formulas like that? There just isn't room in the budget to get it over here. And then in order to get the Americans attention, you're going to have yeah. to really do something, which that's a whole nother story. It's like, we, we've seen the same thing so many times over here that we're just like, so I just don't see it. I don't see how a UK brand, cause we get a lot of people that are like, we get a lot of clients that are like, you know, we really want to break into the American market and we're like, well, okay, Americans can't break into the American market. So, yeah, you, know, we have, you have the advantage of, of money. So I really don't see, I don't see them. There's definitely cool products, but even like we'll take something like um, we were talking about brain gains earlier or supplement needs. Very, very cool products. Um, would they ever be able to get here and get the traction? I just don't see it. Don't yeah, see it. I can see where you're coming from. I can definitely see that. And I can think... Yeah, I think I agree to a certain extent. I think that unless unless you had such a huge following that right. included US, yep. yeah, you wouldn't be able to arrive and then create the following. You'd have to have the following and know that, okay, I have 100,000 followers, 20,000 are from the US, let's give it a quick go. Um, yeah. Because like you say, it's so hard. And even for us, like importing from the US, it, it's so costly um sometimes i'll go to a brand and i'll say come on right let's get your brand over here you're a smallish brand i really need you to drop your price like i need you to drop your price i've already got you on my top tier i said yes but i'm not in the same country i'm completely separate it's going to cost mm -hmm. me this much to get it here and this much then i've got to add on all my customs and my duty charges and my vat charges and this and that and they go okay well i'll drop you a dollar I'm like, but it's going to cost me five, six dollars to do it. So how can I do that? And it's like, right. it's really frustrating sometimes. And it, funnily enough, it's not even the bigger brands. The bigger brands are willing to sometimes do it. It's sometimes yep. the smaller ones. And you think, dude, I'm trying to grow your brand on a global level. Give me some leverage and mm -hmm. let me go away and do this. It's either you sit and stay where you are or you come with us. Right. You, might, you might only make two dollars a product, but you are global. Like you are literally going to be global. Um mm -hmm. And for some reason, some of them don't get that. A lot of them do. Like, I love a lot of a lot of American um, small business owners are amazing, genuinely. Um, I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. That's why we did it. But yeah, yeah, like Chris from Nova Farm, like um, he was meant to be coming over this year actually for um, the the new Fit Expo that we're all kind of getting behind, and um, mm -hmm. he was meant to be on our stand because with Nova Farm we brought it over when they only had what did they only have. I think they had MV Pre, but it was under Precision Research. 
Mm, so yeah, so it was yeah. like the sister company or something. So we brought MVP over mm. and um, basically at the start, it wouldn't sell. Like literally we, we tried to give it to everyone. We're like, it's really good. Just trust us. They wouldn't trust us. They wouldn't sell it. Anyway, um, we ended up giving it to one of our athletes. We ended up trialing it more ourselves and literally like, boom, literally blew up, um, did really well. And then basically I sat down with Chris and I said, Chris, we need to change this formula. This formula, I can't sell it anymore. It has, you know, Robul signing. That's illegal right. here. It has right. Agmatine in. Um, and we sat down but and... you guys can use DMHA. Yeah, literally, yeah. How weird is that? Like, it's the weirdest thing ever. Um, no Agmatine then. Literally, Agmatine is the worst one as well. Like, they will come for you, like, straight away come for you for that. Um, but, yeah. yeah, so I sat down with Chris and we made a formula up and, and, and he said to me, literally, I'll let you have, you know, pretty much we'll, we'll design it together, but you tell me what you want in there and at what dosages. Right. Um, he sent me some samples over. We tried it. It was the best thing ever because he, he actually messaged me and he said, I don't think it's that great. I said, right, okay, that's a bit worrying. So anyway, he sent the sample to Observer and we tried it, uh, me and my business partner, and we said, this is the best thing we've ever tried, like the best thing. And um, anyway, so we got the tub. I said, listen, just get them made, UK formula, do it, let's do it now. We got them all over and it's now probably the number one selling pre in the UK. Um, mm. And like literally like the the partnership we have with with Chris over there, and, and it's such a shame we haven't meet, I haven't met each other yet. Um, but the partnership is literally like he will do anything for us. Like he's such a good guy, and I guess that's because we've given him such success in the UK. But mm-hmm. um, it's also down to his to his help as well. So, well, there's going to be yeah. some give and take, right? There's always going to be some sort of give and take. That's why, like when we, because we've had clients where you know, they want to get into the UK and what we tell them is like, well, exactly like what you're talking about. <clears throat> there has to be, it's hard to do a brand will come in and say, they'll be like, okay, I want to be in retail. I want to be on Amazon. I want to be international. Each one of those strategies is very intensive. Um, stuff like what you're talking about is the brand willing to like literally work with you yeah. to figure out the best way to make this happen. And a lot of times like we'll see smaller brands, you know, and this is something we talk a lot about and it, it just happens all the time. You have people, they start a brand. It's their part-time gig. They they're young. They might live with their parents. Yeah. So they're like, okay, if I make a formula for X amount of money, I, I'm going to make this, this yeah. huge margin right? Oh, that's, that's killer. But you're not thinking down the road. What if you, what about employees? What about when you grow? What if you want to go international? They don't think about these things yeah. beforehand. And then they go, they come to you and say, Oh, Danny, uh, you know, let's, let's work out a deal. And you go, okay, well, I need your price to be here. And they go, well, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because then I'm not making any money. It's like, well, you're not, it, we talk about this all the time. You're not retail ready. You're not international retail yeah. ready. And that's why it's like, Always in the past, it's been these massive brands with, you know, you know, less than stellar formulas because they have the ability to work that into their business model exactly. or they have, or they're willing to, not many brands are going to be willing to sit down with you, like with Chris and the Innova Farm people, yeah. which I love those guys. They're, they're awesome. I love what they do. Um, but to really take that relationship with you seriously enough where we're like, okay, let's get you involved. And that's where I think you see some cool things yeah. in the industry where in the United States, we, we hurt ourselves going back to what we were talking about because we're not willing to work with each other yeah. Yeah. to make something cool happen. Yeah. We're just like, no, you know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, we actually have to work together to make this happen. Yeah. And you just see, we see it all the time. You know, Prady and I go through the entire process with brands. We go through, retail relationships, manufacturing relationships, you know, sourcing ingredients, all this, all these pieces. And there's always some sort of pushback or some sort of um, landmine that you're trying not to step on yeah. through this process that can, that can just ruin the whole entire thing. Like to get things to go perfectly smoothly um, never happens. No, so exactly. you, have get, you have to get a lot of people working together all with the same goal. You do. Yeah, you do. And I, I think that we kind of, um, I remember I was actually sat in the car and uh, Chris said to me, okay, that cost is coming out around a certain amount. Um, I, I'm only going to make, let's say, $3. I said, yeah, okay. I said, well, I'll tell you what, trust me. Just just trust me. Just give me that price. I will do literally what I can to make this work. If it doesn't work and it's really slow, then put your price back up for me. 
but let's just give it a go. Let's smash it. Let's see what we can really do. Give people a good price, a good formula, and you can you can take over the UK. The, the space is there to do it. Whereas I think in America, it's very much a lot more congested. There's so many brands. There's so many people trying to do the same thing. Over mm. here, it was very sparse. There wasn't many people doing what was needed to be done. Um, and of course, Chris said that. And he said, you know what? I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to make much. I'll make you a full lot of UK formula so only you can move it. Um, and the fact he trusted me made me want mm-hmm. to go out there and do that for him. Um, right. Which is, which is, yeah. it's always about the people, man. Like, it's yeah. always about it the people. It is a people business. We, we say that all the time. It's, it's a people business. And, but then also in tying into something we talked about last, last week, you're, you think about all that. Like, if people are listening to that, like all the work, that goes into say MV pre being big and you yeah. think if that product sucked, you would, you would go through all that work for no reason yeah. because then people are going to use it and they're going to be like, well, it sucks. Yeah. So it's like, that's why it sort of goes back to um, not necessarily about, you know, how much money can we make here together? Are we going to work together to deliver something? Because then there's always sort of that payoff. We talk to people about like, is it worth it to lose money on a deal? Yeah. To, to in order for the payoff to be larger down the road, those are things that um, a lot of brands don't take into consideration. A lot of guys, and it's good that you see um, a lot of these like younger guys. They come in with financial backgrounds, business backgrounds, so everything that they do is on paper and Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that. And yeah, they'll ask they'll ask pretty nice questions, and we're like, "Boy, you should just talk to that person. Go yeah. and." get on the phone with that person and let's talk because so much of it comes back to it's about dealing with people and yeah. people you're your the customers are who you're trying to help at the end but it's people working with people whether it's manufacturers retailers brands it's always people that yeah, have yeah. their own sort of thing so the more you can sort of um work together you know you can come up with some really cool things if it you're is, willing yeah. to put in the work yeah and it's so, so, and it's so specific off. man like it's things are so specific to certain people <clears> like I actually, funnily enough, I had my first person today ask me to do a formula and consult them about it, and I was really, really happy about that. <laughs> but uh, so basically, this this guy had asked me, and he was making his new brand, and I don't really know who he is to be honest with you, but he's making this brand, and um, he sent me over a formula, and this is how it came about. He said, "What do you think of this formula?" And I said, "To be honest with you, it's not very good. Um, there's a lot of places it needs work." And I was sat with um, my guy who basically works in, in the warehouse, of Insights Warehouse, and um, he turned around to me and said to me, why are you going to go and redesign his formula over DMs when realistically a lot of people would charge him for that? And it wasn't a case of me trying to make money out of a situation. It was just a case of I don't want to quickly go, this ingredient would be nice, this one would be nice, this one would be nice. I need to speak to you as a person and mm-hmm. see what do you, where do you want this to go? Because I can't see anything other than a logo that you've made and a name, which to me says nothing. Um, where, like, do you want this formula to be, let's say, stim heavy? Do you want it to be this? Do you want it to be that? Whereas he just said, I want a mind-blowingly good formula. I said, yes, but it's not going to work like that. So we need to sit down and pinpoint something that you want to target. You can't get everything. It's very, very unlikely. Um and that's kind of where the person thing comes into it. I want his personality, and then I'll go from there to decide what he wants, mm-hmm. um, which is one of those things, like, like again, what we've been saying, we say it again and again, but it's you need to have your own personality on a product. Don't just say, you make me a formula, I will pay you money, and that's it. Because what's that going to do? Everyone can have the same formula. I could just give you the same formula I've just found on, a, on another stack 3d post <laughs> right like yeah, do you know what i mean copy it. yeah because yeah, i think that and i'll use um strom as an example i think because i don't know the guys at strom but they seem like they know what they're doing right yeah. they know about ingredients they could make a a 40 dollar formula yeah. easily right and make it mind-blowing but that's not part of what they want to do yeah they want to they want to go seems like more and when i say simple that's a good thing they want approachable, affordable, yeah. um, but but very beneficial yeah. formulas that they can sort of get out there to everyone. So I, I totally agree. I think we hit on that last week. Dude, every like day I get someone saying, hey, I would love to send you my formula. Some random person, let me get your thoughts. Yeah. 
and like in my head, I already know what the formula looks like. Yeah, yeah, it has, yeah. It, it's got this much citrulline, it's got this much beta alanine, it's got this <laughs> yeah. much betaine, and I'm already like bored. I don't want to talk about your formula. I want to talk about exactly what you're saying. What's what's going on? What's going on behind the scenes? What, yeah. What is your plans? What's your goals? Where you know? What's your sort of personal situation? You know, yeah. without too much details, but it's like where are you trying to go with this? And yeah, and why? It's like your why are you yeah, doing it? Exactly. Yeah. And it's... then maybe it's like okay. When it comes to actually, um, <clears throat> I would say critiquing formulas or tweaking them, very rarely do I change someone's formula. Maybe I'll be like, okay, it's probably, you know, if it's a cost thing, like if we're working directly with someone to try to drive down costs of your formula, sometimes I'm like, look, that ingredient is only in there. That's an expensive ingredient. You're only putting it in there for to look good on a label. Do we yeah. need that? Because yeah. it's not doing anything that the other 12 ingredients aren't doing yeah. already. So maybe we can take that out. It'll be the same exact benefits for the for the person. Sometimes we'll do that, but very rarely. It's like putting that puzzle together of the formula, the brand, your goals, the person. And it's like for some reason, people got under this impression that if I just come up with a formula, then everything takes care of itself. And it's yeah. like everybody's doing that literally everyone yeah. and there's probably a lot of people that are doing it better whatever your idea is someone's already doing it better most likely yeah so you got to use the the uniqueness of whatever your situation is to your advantage and we just don't see that yeah so exactly yeah because we've we've had so many people contact us throughout this period um that are setting up retail stores online retail stores very similar to insight right and they're doing it out of boredom they're doing it because they are self-isolating, whatever it's called. They're quarantined in. Right. They're thinking, what can I do with my time? But it's like, you do realize that you're going to do this. You're going to spend a, a, a few hundred pounds getting some stock in, and it might not work. Like, what is your reason for doing it? Oh, I think it might work. Why? Give me a reason to why it might work. Like, some of the guys I really like, the loyal customers of ours, I really like the people, but I just sometimes think, you know, why do you need to do this? Because... If you're buying your supplements from us and however many other people are and you're buying it from that other company that's similar and that other company that's similar and that other company that's similar, why do you need to do it? Why is it right. going to influence your point? life? Like, you've got a 9 to 5 job. How are you going to pack orders? How are you going to do this? How are you going to distribute? How are you going to have the time to do all this? You're probably not, which means by this point, you're probably going to give up. Um, yeah, I know that... Um... You know, it, it goes back to that. We've had this conversation so many times. People are always like, Justin, you know, why don't you make your own line? I'm like, because I know how much work. It yes. Takes. Do I, I? Do we know what to do? Absolutely we do. But a, a lot of it comes down to, uh, like, what am I going to bring to the table? Yeah. Like, w at this point, wh what am I going to do to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release a formula, and now it has to also make sense for the customer, right? Yeah. Customers want and expect certain things and products. So the formula for me is already, I hate to even say it, but I'm like, I'm just so bored with the industry in general. Yeah. And that's why like one thing I really like about what Glaxon is doing over here is they've come in and they're getting people like myself to look at these formulas and look at these things in a different way. Because not only are they doing things differently and their products are working, but they're telling you why. They're yeah. not holding, they're not holding it like, um, they're not going, oh, we're just we're just smarter than you. We know that if we because they do they they have their own lab, they do testing like, <laughs> yeah, like crazy. These guys are crazy. They 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 sit around and they mess around with ingredients and then they they include crazy people like me that's willing to be a guinea pig. But then you they really want your feedback and that ultimately leads yeah. to a better product down the road. And it's like, well, when you see brands sort of come in and sort of kick the table over on this boring industry that we sort of got ourselves into and boring not necessarily bad because a lot of these products are beneficial but it's like well what do you you know what are you going to do what do you yeah. what do you bring to the table that's any different than these other because you can call up a contract manufacturer with a couple thousand dollars and say hey look everybody i made my own pre-workout nobody yeah. gives a shit like nobody cares like that's yeah. going to sit in your it's going to sit in your house and you're going to realize that nobody wants it other than the two people that, you know, you're friends with. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, so now what? You know, exactly. So then now you're like, okay, well, that, that didn't go how I thought it was going to go. So yeah. you just, 
throw another brand onto the pile of yeah ones that are unprepared sort of get into the industry and then also what you're doing is you're just making the industry you're sort of watering it down even more because people yeah. are like they go to a wall of pre-workouts and there's 75 of them and really at the end of the day there's like barely any difference between any of them yeah exactly yeah there's so not like so it's like and then people get like so worried that they're going to buy the wrong one yeah that they don't buy anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They go, what if I make the wrong decision? Like I'm telling you, man. Like I have these conversations with people all the time. They'll they'll say to me, Justin, I I don't know which one to buy. Yeah. Should I buy Inspired Amino product or should I buy Alpha Alliance? I'm like, they're the same thing. Yeah. They're like the same exact product. <laughs> Just look at the ingredients. But they're like, well, I don't know which one's better. I'm like. It's an amino acid product. Like it's the same freaking thing. <laughs> Just buy one and like move on. But people are like so scared of making the wrong decision yeah, anymore. Yeah. I, do you know what I good, think? But... I think in a certain way, we could have potentially brought this on slightly ourselves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's it's really <laughs> funny because kind of like you educate people on ingredients, but then they start to take it way too seriously down to the line where it's like, well, this one has 500 milligram of coconut water. This one has a gram. Like, should I go for the one that has a gram? And I'm like, I don't know. Do you want extra coconut water? Do you not? I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? I don't want it, but do you might want it. Um, right. And yeah, we, we have the question. The one question I get on the question box every single time is either top three pre-workouts or favorite stim pre. I have no idea because... For me, mm -hmm. I can try something, it can make me feel ill, it can make me feel like I'm going to die, or I can try mm -hmm. something and it could even be the same product and the next time I feel amazing. So if I say to you, so I end, what I end up doing is stupidly, I actually kind of answer it, but I go, oh, I would go for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I wouldn't stock one that wasn't good in some right. way. So right. just pick one, just pick one. But <laughs> <laughs> and that's like horrifying for people. There was someone <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I, I felt I was trying not to answer it, it like in a rude way, but someone said, I use I use this pre-workout and I loved it. Can you tell me an, other products that are like it? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, first of all, why are you changing? If you love that product, why don't you just keep buying it? Yeah. But second of all, I was like, the ingredients are right there. Like it's right there just go find them i said i make the analogy all the time i was like that would be like going and you sit down at a restaurant and i i had a steak and shrimp and rice man it was just such a good meal yeah. hey <laughs> is there any other restaurants in the world that i can get a steak dinner and you're like yes just look at the menu and like order the steak dinner. like what the hell when did we get here at this point which is where people are just like i okay i liked it now what? It's like there's. It's not a secret. It's not yeah. a secret. Yeah. It's not you know some obviously stuff is proprietary and things like that. But a lot of these formulas anymore these days, popular ones are all. Like I said people. Yeah. Very the similar. The worst one. The worst one I I would get for a while. People would just were losing their minds over which one to buy. It was Alpha Lions, Komodo pumps, Komodo pump or um, Inspired's FSU. Right. Okay. And they just are like Justin. I can't make a decision and I'm just like, look, you're going to be fine. Buy them. And then I'll go buy them both. Right. <laughs> and then people are like, wait, they're like, wait a minute. I can't do that. And it's like, <laughs> hold on. Like, hold on. You're going to, you're going to use a pump product next month. Right. Or like two months from now. Yeah. You're going to buy more. Right. Buy them both. Try them both. And like, see what you like. Yeah. More. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And it's like, People are um, the why well, I can't afford to do that. It's like, well, you're you're gonna buy more next month. Just just buy. Yeah. Like, I use people are always like, Justin, what what pre workouts do you use? I I'm like, it depends how I feel that day. Like, yeah. did I, how did I get? How was my sleep? Um, what's my training like that day? How how has my stim use been lately? What's my mood like? Do I yeah. need a kick in the face today, or do I just need you know like well it's like I don't know, man. We we did do it to ourselves in a way. Um, yeah yeah i think it's uh it's like partly self-inflicted but <sighs> it's hard because it's a good thing that people are looking what's in it yes that's the it's that's the hard the thing time. yeah exactly it's good that they're doing that and i think it's it's really good but i think there's just a case of it's going a little bit far 
and people just need to understand that it's a non-stim pre as long as it looks like it has what you you tend to see normally um, and what you like then that's brilliant go for it um like i literally would say i felt no difference from because I've, I've got Komodo pump and fsu in my cupboard just there and for me um the only difference it would be the beta alanine in Komodo pump in terms of that i feel i feel the tingles sometimes but yeah. it's just the tingles it's not actually doing anything really for me um right. but yeah it's, it's a bit of a weird one but i guess can you remember what question we even started on just then like uk product no. was that <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I don't remember where we were going with this, but I think it was just because um, you you mentioned something I think that was really important that a lot of retailers that I know, people always go to them, they're like, oh, I need a good pre-workout. And you're like, I don't stock shitty pre-workouts. Yeah. Like you could literally, and this is something that Tim from Natural Body Inc. says all the time. He goes, I could blindfold you. I could walk you over to my pre-workout section. You can grab one and I guarantee that it's it's at least somewhat you're gonna get your yeah. money's worth when it yeah. comes to the ingredients you're gonna you're like you're gonna probably at least like it i have full confidence in that so but like what you're saying it is better than the alternative of us blindly just buying things yeah exactly but we, yeah but we have that mixture still where people people overanalyze it yeah and then we still have the mixture of people that refuse to read yeah exactly like, yeah yeah like the worst questions i get are the the versus ones I don't even mind the best questions, but they'll be like, they'll be like this versus this. And I'm like, what, like Komodo pumps versus FSU. I'm like, I don't know. Like read the fucking label, like <laughs> just read it. Just look at the label. And what do you want me to tell you? Like, yeah. you want me to tell you which one to buy? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, um, it's like, oh, I had it in my mind then. Oh man, what was I going to say? It was something about what you just said. Well, we would get one too. Like, I'll just tell like another frustrating question. Um, <clears throat> Intra workout products are becoming very popular, carbohydrate sources and stuff. And I keep getting this one. People are like, NutriBio Super Carb, which is just cyclic dextrin. Yeah. Or Axe and Sledge Demo Day, which is cyclic dextrin, carb 10. It's like 12 ingredients. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like this one has one ingredient. And this one has 12. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. Like, I, And that doesn't even mean that one is better than the other. It's no, like, it doesn't. Well, I make that same analogy with people. I'm like, do you, when you sit down at the restaurant, did you just want the steak? Or did you want a steak, a potato, a drink, uh, an appetizer? Yeah. Like, what are you in the mood for? Like, what yeah. are you in the mood for, for, for paying for? Or what, are you, what are you feeling that day? Yeah, it's so, so personal. It's so personal. I guess another way of looking at it is, would you get someone to choose your outfit? Like, would you have, let's say, a woman come? A woman comes to you and goes, "Which outfit should I wear?" And you go in a shop and you're like, "I have no idea what. Like, <laughs> what what color do you like? Like, it's exactly the same thing of saying, what type of feeling do you like?" Um, right. And we had one the other day. I did a story on someone asked me about Seventh Gear from Axe and Sledge, and I went through the panel and I just said, "It's it's very simple. Um, to be honest, mm -hmm. I think it's something." I might like to try. It seems pretty subtle, but it's it, it looks like it'll be a decent product. And um, someone replied with, um, like, no no offense to this guy as well. He's, he's not a bad dude, but he replied with, so basically you mean it's a load of garbage? I said, well, I never said that. Like, no, genuinely right. I don't. I would love to take it. And he's like, yeah, yeah but it's weak. It, it's not. It's weak for you. Weak for who? Exactly. <laughs> it's weak yeah. for you who takes 10 gram of your himbine every day but yeah. for me, who can't handle your himbine very well because I don't take it, literally, that would probably hit me quite well. Yeah. And it, it's so bad that people have this whole thing of it's shit because it's not strong. That's not the case. Yeah. You need to be able to perform on it for a start. So if you're a, a, I don't know, a 40 kilogram, that's obviously a difference to you would say pounds, but 40 kilogram woman, that's going to hit you ha a lot harder than the 20 stone guy. Like... Yeah. I don't get yeah. this whole thing of it's not strong, so therefore it's not good. That's not a thing. Yeah, because then that's what um, – there's a lot of products that I personally don't like. It doesn't make them bad products. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there was someone that messaged me the other day or put on my question sticker about, you know, Core Fury is the big pre-workout over here right now. It's just – it's such an awesome blend of actual pumps and focus and yeah. energy. 
it's got like 375 caffeine, I think, in there, and it's got some choline. It's got um, amazing pumps. Anyway, Can I ask you, people... do you, know, do you know the Corfieri? Is it um, price-wise over there, is it an expensive pre? Um, no, well, expensive. It for It's appropriately priced for what it is. For what it for is. For sure. It, right. It's... Um, they have a great business model um, in play. They they're not um, the type that would, you know, make a pre workout that is beyond what people are willing to pay. You know, people yeah. here they're really not going to pay more than like two dollars a serving, right? E- even though we'll pay three or four dollars for a fucking energy drink all day long with <laughs> caffeine in it, but whatever. That's a whole other rant for another day. But so um, core is very. I think it's around probably like two dollars. Uh, around a serving which for what they're delivering is amazing it, it really is um definitely one of my favorite pre-workouts so someone said to me the other day they were like you know is there something wrong with me i've taken it several times and i feel nothing and i was like yes there's something wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> i was like i don't know what that is but i was like you know just because everyone else feels it, it you know you might not feel anything but also i don't i don't know what you're habits are i was like i know based on the ingredients within that product you should get a good workout you should feel something yeah at least yeah if you're not feeling anything from and and that happens to all of us i mean there's there's times where i mean i'm not judging because i'll use i'll use some crazy shit and then i realized i was like wow i just took that much and i didn't feel anything that's yeah. my fault that's yeah. not the that's not the pre-workout's fault. Yeah. That that's on me. It's like, what did I do to get myself to this point? So sometimes people are just not willing to sort of unplug a little yeah. bit from from the stimulus. So then they turn around and they will criticize a product when it's it's just them. Yeah. Really. It's a it's a personal decision. Like I said, I'll never I'll never use a product and then just crap all over it um, just because it didn't perform well for me. Like, yeah. It could be a lot of factors involved. If if the formula is good, and I think that it's, and then that's why we always talk to other people too. We we get, you know, I, I'll never just be the one, the judge, jury, and executioner of a product. Yeah, I want to make sure that we talk to other people. Like, well, what did what did Danny think of this one? What did you know this person think? Yeah. What did you get different groups of people um, together that give feedback about products and how they're using it? That's why it's important too. Like. Um, Glaxon did something for the supplement Snoop group the other day about that Serenity product. It's like an anti-stress and cortisol thing. Yeah. They're like, you know, just please tell us how you're using this and what did you feel? Yeah. That way they can sort of put that puzzle together of, you know, how people are, because use case is a big thing when it comes to supplements too. Like some people are just, what I found going on another sort of tangent, but if I use a gram of caffeine when I first wake up in the morning, won't do anything. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 But if I use 300 milligrams of caffeine in the afternoon, I'm flying. Yeah. 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 But it's all about, it's all about sort of my, you know, cortisol balance and all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Going on How fatigued you are as well, I think is a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously so, yeah. if you're more fatigued, you're going to get, if, if you're feeling more tired and you take caffeine, you're going to feel it more because you've been tired. But if you're waking right. up fresh and you take caffeine, you'll be like, well, I feel fresh anyway. Um, mm. But like, what I wanted to touch on is, uh, well, first of all, actually, I wanted to say, just to get it in here, what Glaxon have done is beyond genius. I think it blows my mind, genuinely, what they've done. Because if, if you sit back in this market and look, like with our sister company, Foresight, we've looked back and tried to do things a little bit differently. And with so many things we've come up with and thought, nah, someone's doing that. And then uh-huh. what they've done is is found a hole and filled that hole so fucking well um <laughs> i agree genuinely me and my business partner and he's not as much into his supplements as me but he like gets them and um he even sat back and he said he said danny man this this company's genius like mm-hmm. the branding the the videos they're doing the formulas the, everything they're doing is so spot on and what annoys mm-hmm. me the most is the fact that we can't sell their pump or both their pre's. That's the main oh, issue. Oh, that's right, because they got Johan Bayern and stuff in there too. Yeah, right? Johan Bayern. Yeah. Um, I think they use some yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, it's. I've actually got, oh, I can't even say it, but yeah, there's some in our store basically somewhere. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's so frustrating that I can't do them because we sell Super Greens, Adrenal, um, all their other ones, and they sell really mm-hmm. well. The greens we cannot keep in stock, but... 
obviously that's a, a conversation a conversation for another day, I think, on greens, because I know what you think and I, I agree exactly with what you think. Um Well it's funny too, because they if you talk to them as well, um they're like <laughs> their pre workouts are extremely um strong. They're they're very well received. They like they'll tell you themselves or like pre workout game is just sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just and you know it's just so boring we've sort we've maxed out everything when it comes to pre-workouts all it really is is what kind of stimulants can we cram into something at this point so one cool thing that you're seeing with them is um all the different aspects that they're sort of touching on um i think that they've been exactly what we've needed in this industry for a little while 100 percent. but what's cool about them too is what people don't appreciate I've seen a lot of like younger brands are like, man, how did, how did this Glaxon just hit the ground and just crush it like this? I was like, what you don't realize is the owner, the formulator, the formulator has been in the industry for forever. Yeah. Like, yeah. He knows his shit. Yeah. Like all these team members that they have, this is a ton of experience and they, they had reached out to me long before their launch. Yeah. And we're already putting things out there and getting feedback and stuff like that, seeing how people, so it's not like they didn't, you know, these, a lot of these people will just call up a contract manufacturer and then six weeks from now, yeah. you have a product. Yeah. And they're like, you know, these people, there's a lot of experience, a lot of trial error, a lot of, but then also like what you said, they're doing something. These guys really like the space vibe and like their marketing. That's them. Oh, like 100%. That those are the type of guys they are. Yeah, so I mean, just, like, is it Joey that does the videos? Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's crazy, ridiculous. man. He's really yeah. like, he's really like, he's so different, I guess, to the normal guy you would see, and he's so, um, well, so intelligent. We know that. Like, I, I literally rewatched. I think it was Super Green's video. Um, I think it was the Adrenal video. The well, most of them. I rewatched them like seven times just to the understand what he said. Yeah, the flight yeah. one. That's it. Oh my. Yeah, that one. I still don't understand. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm like, I'm kept rewinding it back, and I'm like, what word did he just say? I've never yeah. heard of that word in my life. Um, you know what's good about them too is, um, I've been talking with them for a long time, and never at any point when we were talking, like if they'll ask me for my feedback or they'll ask, say, the group for their feedback and stuff like that. They don't ever, and a big downfall with a lot of people within this industry is they'll they'll somehow act like that they know better. Yeah. You know, than everyone else. And I think there's been a big shift with that because, you know, uh, someone, it was uh, my friend over, at, he's over at Dragon Pharma. He said this really well the one time, you know, he's a really good formulator. He knows his stuff. He goes, but he's like, if you get out there these days and you try and tell people like, oh, this is how it is, like, you're just dumber than me. He's like, you'll have, like, actual, like, scientists yeah. come. They'll be like, okay, you're full of shit. So <laughs> you got to be really careful about how you sort of treat. Because in the past, it was supplement companies are like, we hold all the secrets. You peasants just buy from us and we'll, we'll <laughs> tell you. Well, nowadays, it's like, you know, people with the information that's out there, it's not like that anymore. So one thing about Glaxon that I've always appreciated is, it's a give and take sort of thing. It's not them telling me how cool the products they're making are. They yeah. really want to know like what we think about it. And we've actually disagreed on a lot, or not a lot of topics, yeah. but we've had um, some back and forth and they've made me th- see things differently. I've, I think I've right, made yeah. them see things a little bit differently. And um, that's what the industry, I think, has yeah. really needed. No, that's so really good. Everyone, right now, I think everyone else, honestly, to me, to sound like uh, an affiliate of them, but... I think everyone else is kind of playing for second right yeah. now. Yeah, 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 potentially. Yeah, I, th- I think it's, I think, um, yeah, it's just it's just a shame that we can't. Obviously, the legality side of it is just a little bit frustrating for us. Cause, <clears throat> yeah, I would just love to stock those products properly, but it is what it is. But um, I guess as as one last thing, now we're coming up to an hour. I guess one last thing I wanted to kind of mention is. Um, cover we've... anything that we were supposed to cover? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we've... No, we've done better than last time. We've definitely done better. <laughs> but the the one last thing that I think could be quite a quick point to cover is... We've covered it a bit. But banned ingredients, uh, US versus UK. Um, so one, one issue I guess we had is... We've always not been allowed as much as you guys are allowed. 
So we've always been on the back foot in regards to a lot of things. We've had to reformulate so many brands now and um, mm. obviously that takes up a lot of cash because you have to buy big runs. And um, one thing I kind of want to mention was actually one time, which you've already mentioned really early on, is the DMHA thing. And mm. it is so freaking weird. Like, you could get in DMHA over here. You could get in... Um, I don't know. Let's just go with DMHA. So we could get DMHA imported like it was cheddar cheese. I don't know. Something really, really simple, yeah? We can't import protein for the life of it. Like, protein is a fucking nightmare. You literally have to basically get a lawyer involved to basically import protein. Mm -hmm. And... But anyway, to touch on that, that's kind of against the point I was going to make. But with um, Alpha Line Superhuman Supreme, so we brought an Alpha Line. We we run with them for let's say six months, and they brought out the Supreme uh, with the DMHA. It went down amazing. People were buying it like oh, like crazy. And yeah. um, then I get the call from Jordan. Oh, we're taking it out. Oh, for fuck's sake! I'm like, yeah. why? It's like it's banned over here now. I'm like, it's not banned over here. Right. He's like, right, uh, yeah, I've got a few units left. Do you want to take the last ones? I'm like, yes. But then like, we're sat here now and we're like, for fuck's sake, the one mm -hmm. ingredient that we can have mm -hmm. is the one now you guys are like, we can't have it. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Yep. It, it's a, the whole DMHA thing has been totally insane because it started with the DMAA yeah. over here. And because the, the FDA is interesting um, over here for sure. They're very inconsistent with yeah. <clears throat> what they want to attack. But I firmly believe that a big reason why DMHA has, um, has, you know, it's not illegal the way DMA is, but yeah. you're just not allowed to use it. Yeah. Um, it's because of DMA and because of the total yeah. shit show over here that DMA was yeah, like yeah. high tech, high tech <laughs> basically sued, you know, the FDA over this. Yeah, yeah. So, Anything that comes out that's going to be somewhat similar or analogous to DMHA over here is going to be with with extra scrutiny because yeah we're we can be a little petty over here about certain things and even the FDA can so they're the things that they do allow um, that you see in products and then where they're like okay no DMHA it's like yeah it just doesn't make any sense so no. we're sort of but exactly like what you're saying because then you know if a brand wants to grow globally. What if, um, you know, a, a pre-workout, the reason why everyone's buying it is because it has DMHA in it. Yeah. Because as we know, if you can't really compare a DMHA pre-workout to a pre-workout that doesn't have it, it's really hard. Yeah. Because yeah, it it's just a unique sort of ingredient. Yeah. So then what? Then what if you want to distribute worldwide, but you have different, you know, yeah. legal actions? It's like, and then, oh, I can, I can use DMHA in uk but i can't use agmatine <laughs> exactly you know when agmatine is like okay and, and so. we and we had the same thing with um so with the supreme once they changed it because technically we can still have dmha the, the customers over here are still wanting dmha so now they haven't got it in the supreme and it's now the juniper berry or whatever it is um literally sales have gone from like here i'm talking mm -hmm. to like hardly moving uh, yep. And it's a shame because I do love Alpha Line. I love the brand. I think they're amazing, and and the guys behind it are really really cool. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's been one of those things that's been a bit frustrating for for I guess us and for them. But um, the irony it's, it's is the weird. new one's the new one for me is stronger. Yeah, no. Once you try it, like I found the same. Yeah. I'm like, this is too strong for me. Um, it's strong. That yeah. new one is strong as hell. But people just aren't willing to try it over here because they're like, well, it doesn't have DMHA, so why should I bother? Um, yep. But then we've had it with. Literally about four months ago, we had a basically like an email from some official guys, and um, they basically came after Hooperzine. Um, <laughs> yeah, like literally, they went. I'm okay. talking. They came in at us, man. Like they were, they were furious that we were using it, that we were selling it. Um, and I said, but, but Hooperzine's fine. And they went, we put it in everything. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but Even if it doesn't belong in there, UK manufacturers over here that are like the biggest UK brands. Um, and funny enough, they were actually under the umbrella of this company that came at us, which made no sense. And they were saying it wasn't allowed. So I messaged this huge company manufacturer. I said, I'm being told it's not allowed. Is this the case? Well, 
that company likes to pretend that it's not allowed, but basically if you were to say, fuck you, we're using it, they can't really do much. And I was like, yeah, but I don't really wish that right now because... Right, like what, that, like that, what, who comes up with some shit like that? That's exactly like what we deal with here where it's like someone asked me before, actually, I think I was talking to Court the one day. He goes, so what is, what is the issue with DMHA? Like how, how is it viewed in America right now? I was like, well, and this was a few months ago when companies were still making it like yeah. Alpha Line. I'm like, well, it's not allowed, but some companies will make it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, it's not illegal, but it's not a dietary supplement. And it's not, but I was like, we're, we're actually producing more of it now. Yeah. I was like, I, and so it's like, well, there's no, there's, there's no rules. It's exactly. Like, well, so what is, what is the rule here? Exactly. So, yeah. It's, it's like, it's... I, so you don't know what to tell people. No, you don't. You literally have no idea what to say because it's just so... Yeah, it's a 50-50 chance whether anything is banned or not. I have no idea. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so we'll round this one up. Um, thank you yet again, mate. It's been great. And yeah, I don't even know what to reference this as because it's we've talked shit again, basically. Right. Um, but we'll yeah. talk more again next week. We'll, we'll, we'll hit on it eventually. Yeah, we'll try, we'll try and get something going next week where it's a bit more. But um, no, it's been great. Hopefully people enjoyed it. So thank you to everyone that's watched and uh, we'll get this up Friday night, same as usual. Beautiful. All right, man. Yeah. Always good talking to you. Peace, man. See you in a bit.